This follows on from the talk Bob gave earlier, and it's a second look at some of the basics how, of how our money system works. I'm going to be covering some of the same things as Bob did, but approaching them from a different angle. So I'm going to be talking about the four main types of money that are used in this country. Firstly, coins, banknotes, current accounts, um, the money in current accounts, and also a fourth one which is much less familiar. We don't encounter it in our normal lives, the reserve balances that banks hold. And I'm using those four different colours, the brown, green, blue, and what I'm going to refer to as purple, as a, either a light purple or a dark pink, but it doesn't matter if you can't distinguish the colours from where you're sitting. And then we'll do a simple example using the current account money and the bank's reserve money to see how they work together. And as Alistair said, we'll then see if we can answer this question which uh, money reformers have hotly debated over the years. When a bank loan is repaid, is the money cancelled out of existence or is it kept by the bank? The handouts I've given you, you don't need to refer to during the talk. The front page is just a summary of some of the things I'll be saying. And the back page is, gives the tables that we'll be using in the worked example, just in case you can't see the screen clearly at the time. And just a few other words of introduction. I'm going to be talking about the existing system in the United Kingdom. Most other countries have similar systems, although they sometimes use different terminology. And in fact, even in this country, the terminology seems to change every few years as they update the banking system in one way or another. I'm going to be looking at a simplified version of the basics of the system. There are endless complications and ifs and buts that I'm not going to go into. I've just simplified things a bit to get across the fundamentals but if you think I'm saying something that's blatantly wrong or misleading, then you can cover that in the questions at the end. In this talk, I'm going to be explaining the system rather than criticising it. I do agree with the money reform case that the system's <coughs> faulty and needs changing, but I'm not covering that at the moment. Just wanting to give some basic concepts and a framework and language with which which can help to understand what's going on and debate the issues. And last thing to say is, as you may have realised, the whole system is a bit like a conjuring trick. You need to watch carefully because each step along the way looks, may look very simple and straightforward and obvious and innocent, but by the time you get to the end, you realise we've allowed private companies to create almost the whole nation's money supply, and you think, well, where along the way did... Was that, did that trick occur? So to start, types of money. Firstly, the most basic one, coins. And it may be that the original idea was that the value of the coin was the value of the metal it was made out of. But if that was ever the case, it stopped being so very long time ago. It now gets its value from the face value that's stamped on it and the sovereign's imprint, the... Um, the um, Queen's head and the inscriptions that show it's a valid coin of the realm. Secondly, banknotes. And they were originally a transferable IOU. And in fact, it still says on it, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of five pounds, signed by the chief cashier of the Bank of England. And uh, the picture is just supposed to be a hand of somebody writing an IOU. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. How, what, uh, how does that build up step by step? Well, firstly, when I say IOU, that's just a shorthand in case anybody doesn't know for I owe something to you. So if Alan borrows five pounds from Bob, he might write on a piece of paper, Alan owes Bob five pounds and give it to him and maybe sign and date it. Uh, just a private arrangement between them and when he eventually repays the money uh, he might, they might destroy the piece of paper or Bob might sign it to say he's received it now, thank you very much. Secondly, um, 
in the old days, if somebody had five pounds worth of gold that they didn't want to have to look after in the house, they might have deposited it with a goldsmith or in a bank and might get a receipt from that to say that the bank owes Dave Dixon or whoever it is five, sorry, five pounds. So um, d he would then, if he wanted to spend five pounds, pay a merchant five pounds, he'd have to get the gold out of the bank, hand it over to the merchant who then perhaps pay it into his bank. So the whole process would have been a bit cumbersome. And we then get to the point where the banks, instead of doing that, would issue transferable receipts that say the bank owes the bearer five pounds. That means that when he wants to pay his bill, he can hand over the receipt. And as long as the merchant trusts that the bank is reliable, he can accept that and then use that, spend that somewhere else. So, um, and we, we get to the point where the, the notes are getting used as money. And it gets to the point where it doesn't actually matter whether there's any gold there or not, because the notes have now become the money. And that then uh, further developed so that the Bank of England got a monopoly on producing banknotes in England and Wales because if other banks had been doing it, they'd have effectively been printing their own money. And it's now, in the 20th century, gone even, went even further, and the sovereign's portrait started getting printed on the banknotes, which is another sort of acknowledgement that the notes are now official UK money. They're no longer just IOUs from a bank. So that's our first two. Coins, which are basic money, and notes which are now used as money developed from an IOU. And we'll have a look now at the third one, the current account. And that's supposed to be a picture of a bank. And that's also now used as money, because it can be used, as Alistair said, to pay bills or pay taxes. So what is a current account? Well, if you were explaining the concept to a young child, you might say something like, you give you, you put your money for safekeeping in the bank, they look after it for you, and when you want to pay a bill, instead of you having to take the money, you can just ask the bank to hand over the money for you to pay the bill. And the child might have a picture in the mind of a little box with your name on, or a little safe with your name on, in the bank vault with a little bag with your money in it. And of course, that's uh, quite a comforting picture, but it's actually, of course, completely wrong. If that was ever the case, it stopped being so hundreds of years ago. The, a, cur a current account is now an IOU from the bank to you. And it says something like, the cooperative bank owes Alan Atkins £100. That's what really his... Um, that's what really his current account holding £100 is. The clue is in the word bank account, in the words bank account, it's an account of what the bank owes you. It's an IOU statement from them. And as has been mentioned already, it's actually an unsecured loan from you to the bank. You don't normally think of it like that, but when a few years ago Robert Peston said on the news that Northern Rock was having problems and the bank seemed to be in difficulties, people realised soon enough that he was an unsecured loan and they formed big queues outside the branches to try to get their money back before it ran out. Now the other implication of it being an IOU from a bank is that there's what you might call different flavours of this type of money. And if I'm making it blue money, I really need to make it different shades of blue because if HSBC owes you some money, it's a diff completely different thing from the Co-op Bank or Santander giving you an IOU. They're not directly transferable. If I've got a statement from the Co-op Bank saying that I've got £100 of bank account money, I can't take that into a branch of HSBC and ask for the money. They'll say it's nothing to do with them. And an IOU from the co-op bank to me is a private arrangement between that bank and me and doesn't have validity outside of